Good morning. It's good to be talking to you at a time when things are largely still in lockdown, but when, as Trevor Lloyd has reminded us, we are also in a season of open gates. I just trust you are experiencing the goodness, the kindness and love of God in whatever situation you find yourself at the moment. My husband John and I are members of English Heritage and normally we enjoy visiting ancient buildings which include castles and God has been speaking to me recently by reminding me of a castle ruin that we visited last year. Like most castles we crossed a moat, in this case a dry moat. We entered through open gates, we were surrounded by thick walls and we were rewarded with an amazing view high above the surrounding countryside. I think we tend to have a romantic view of castles or often we think of them as military strongholds, which they often were, but they were also homes to thriving and busy communities of people, from servants to the gentry, with obviously the servants serving the gentry. They were communities surrounded by thick walls, which would, I imagine, have given a real sense of safety and security. Once through the gates, you felt that you were in a place of refuge, from any danger outside, either real or perceived. Many castles were set on hills, so they can very clearly be, be seen by those around. That's a reminder of the word we have received of the church as a city on a hill and a light in the darkness. But the castle John and I visited provided us with a wonderful view of the countryside all around and is a reminder that we are to be those who see the lie of the land and are aware of what is around us. We need to see what is going on with the eyes of the Spirit and to be aware of the opportunities we have at this time. I believe community is at the core. We are community church and though confined we are still a community and we are still community church. We may miss Jubilee Centre and look forward to meeting there again in the future. It's important for us and the, for the community we serve. But God has never been confined or limited and never will be to buildings made by human hands. 1 Peter verse 2 reminds us that God builds with living stones, with Jesus himself as the cornerstone the most important stone on which the rest of the building is based and depends. Jubilee Centre is a safe place and a refuge for those in need and it will be again in future times. But it is those things not because it has walls but because of the presence of God's Spirit and God's people and the way we serve others. God still has a community of people he still has a family he wants to use at this time. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress, and this has not changed. He is still a place of security for those who need him. The gates are still open wide. There is a well in the castle, and it still has pure water in it. Today is still the day of salvation, as many people are reassessing what really matters in their lives and finding it's not things but relationships. And people are hearing the gospel in a new way. The church has had to step up and now there are many worship services, many resources online, online prayers, online telephone helplines. Recently I've been watching a live webcam of peregrine falcons on the roof of Salisbury Cathedral. From the ground they would go totally unnoticed but high above the ground chicks have hatched and are being nurtured and growing every day. New birth is taking place for some even if we can't see it. At some time we will be those who help to strengthen tender shoots 
will be those who encourage, feed and help new believers to build firm foundations in the faith through things like our Alpha courses. But God wants us to partner with him now. This is a time to look outwards from the castle walls and not to become wrapped up in ourselves. To see the possibilities with the eyes of faith. To see the possibility of miracles at the gates, as Trevor Lloyd encouraged us to do. In Acts chapter 12, there is a time of persecution. Peter was arrested and in prison. And it says the church was praying very earnestly for him. And we read in Acts chapter 12 how he supernaturally escaped through the prison gates and went to where the believers were praying and knocked on the door. Verse 13 says, He knocked at the door in the gate and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognised Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. Verse 16. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quieten down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Only when the door was opened could Peter share the nature of his miraculous escape firsthand. And the doors to people's hearts need to be opened so the good news is received firsthand, so that the King of Glory can come in. We need to be those who help to open doors. I believe prayer is vital. In a sense, it oils the hinges of the door, the hinges of the gates. We need to continue to pray for our workplaces, our neighbourhoods and our nation. Recently I felt I should walk the length of our road praying for the neighbours. Some praying could be informed praying as I know a little about some people's lives. I know some of the sorrows and some of the sadnesses and some of the happy things that have happened to people. But where I didn't even know the names of people in some houses, I was able to pray a blessing on them, to call down a blessing from heaven to earth. This really blessed me as it made me feel involved with the neighbourhood. And I believe it will also have an influence on those that have been prayed for. Our prayers, we must believe, always have an influence. Because God is powerful to answer prayer. But people also need to hear the good news directly from us. When at last Peter has been able to speak to the praying believers, he says in verse 17, Tell James and the other brothers what happened. We all have stories of the goodness of God in our own lives and we can look to develop relationships now that will open up deeper conversation in the future and enable us to share some of these stories with other people. In Acts 4, there's a story of Peter and John who've been brought before the religious council for preaching the good news and the council want them to stop doing it. And in fact, they tell them never again to speak to anyone in Jesus' name. The response of Peter and John is this in verses 19 and 20. But Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Paul says in Romans 10, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? How can they believe if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? For whatever reason, we can sometimes fail to share the gospel. As Alison said last week, we might want to share the gospel, but we feel embarrassed, we feel nervous, we don't know how to go about it. Then we can feel guilty and inadequate, which is not what God wants for us. The Christian life is supposed to be an adventure. It is good to be encouraged and learn ways in which we can share our faith from those who do it well. 
but we need to challenge ourselves afresh as individuals and together as a community. We need to develop our relationship with the Father and stir up a passion for sharing the good news of his loving kindness and salvation, which is our true calling. We want to be those who say along with Peter and John, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. So the gates are open. God is still at work calling people into relationship with himself. And this is the time to look beyond the walls at the opportunities around us and believe that God is going to do good things through us. Let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that in this season of what seems to be closed doors, Father, we are in a season of open doors. And Father, we will be in that season until you decide otherwise. And Father, I thank you that you are still bringing people to know you. You are still saving people. You are still strong to save. You are still a refuge into which people can run and find hope and find shelter. And Father, you are a, a God who wants us to see the bigger picture, to be a city on a hill, a people who are seen, a light shining in the darkness, but also a people of vision who can look beyond the walls, can look out and see the harvest around us, can see the opportunities and have a desire to grasp those opportunities. Father, we thank you for your continuing goodness, your continuing grace and mercy. And Father, we thank you for your constant blessing on all of us, Lord Jesus. Amen.